Hey friends. So we have something really exciting and fun today. Today we are going to be talking about Teddy Baby. Teddy Baby is a really, really fun teddy bear. He sort of looks like the Zotty a little bit in a way because of his open mouth and some of his characteristics, but we're gonna be talking about him today with Stipe Kaufman and we're just gonna bring her on camera and chat with him. So, hey Billy, Billy Harris is tuning in everybody. So here is Teddy Baby and he was, hey Rebecca. Well, hello. Hi. I'm bathed in sunlight. Well, yeah, that. sometimes I have to like move around a little bit to figure out the, the best lighting when I get on one, one of these self. These, well, I'm, these I'm self making videos. myself, I'm being goth now. I'm turning all the lights down in my house. So is that better? We're almost there. Ooh. A little bit better. It looks a little, it looks a little um, fu fuzzy. Um, can you um, clean off the front camera? It might have a little smudge on it. I think that could be, just grab like some kind of piece of cloth and just clean that front camera right there and see if we get the smudge off. A little bit? Okay. Well, hang on. There you go. There you go. That's better. That's better. A lot Sorry better. for the smudge. Oh no, that's okay. okay. I have to, I, I have to de-smudge mine about uh, 10 times a day. Um, anyway, that is I much better. So, up. okay. So we, while people hop on, this is good because it gives people an opportunity to kind of get on the feed and, um, and, and start sharing the video so more people can get on. So today, um, here's the little buddy I sent you on Tuesday. I was cleaning out that same box that I found those other little guys in and I sent you a picture of him and you said, can you please, please pass the oxygen, which is always yes. one of my favorite things to hear from you, always. Well, this is a fabulous bear. I, I wish I was sitting next to you to go through the box because I can only imagine what's in it. It's when, as you, you pull up things, it gets better and better. I'm waiting for you to pull a PV55, which is a bear that is technically doesn't exist, out of the box next. So I'm ready for that. Oh, but good. You have, oh my, wouldn't that be fabulous? We'd, we'd really be famous toy people if that was the case. What's so great about this piece? Well, I, you know, I love teddy babies. And I think if you think back, uh, was it... Uh, Orlando that we did like a half an hour talk on the pre-war and just post-war teddy babies and that was so much fun we could still so be talking there's so much to say what you have what what I so love about this piece is this piece has the finest characteristics of everything from the late 1930s through about 1955 so this wonderful piece teddy baby is sort of timeless and is kind of could be considered actually wartime era or just simply after it. If you look at the piece, the IDs on it really span a great deal of time. He has his ear button, which is fabulous. And his ear button, as far as I can tell, appears to be a short trailing F button, which would date him somewhere in like the 1936 through 19, early 1950s. When Stife reopened for toy making business after the war in the, in the late 1940s, about 1940, 1950, they used anything they could find on hand to make and brand bears. So it's very possible that this bear was made in the very, maybe 1950, maybe, and they pulled the, oh, stop it. Just stop it. That's just too cute. Oh my God, I love it. It's very possible that this button was a pre-war button and put on a post-war bear because that's sort of what happened during this time. They used all sorts of IDs. No. The other thing that, that's very, very interesting about the bear is that he has the U.S. zone tag. And Rachel, you want to show everybody what that is? Okay, that's on his arm. And what, it, it, what that means is that this bear was produced in a factory that was confirmed by U.S. troops starting as early as 1948, but these tags didn't really appear on things till about 1950 or 51, that this item was produced in a, in, an, in a building or an organization or a company that was not producing our war-like materials. It was not producing munitions or uniforms or anything that could be used for violence. And the sort of the sad kind of thing about that is that for a very short period of time in the, in the mid-1940s, Stythe Factory was taken over by the Nazis and was producing war-like materials. So it is, it is sadly appropriate that the, that the animal, the Stife animals have these tags, which, which say that the 
factory was not producing war materials because at one time they were for a very short amount of time, which is extraordinarily sad. So those tags are very, very interesting and really date something as leaving the factory in the very early 1950s. So the button is a little bit older and the tag puts it leaving the factory in the early 1950s. Now, so does, it have, does it have a chest tag? He or does not have a chest tag, but he has a working... Ooh. He sings. Or is he blowing kisses? I love it. What I can see on him is very appropriately, he has a blue collar, which is exactly what he should have on, and a bell. And the bell was kind of baby-like. From the very beginning, they had those bells. So this is a great bear. Um, he has felt paw pads, correct? He does, yes. And they're in All right. good condition, too. So, so this style of bear was produced, I think, maybe in, in five sizes post-war from... I don't know, about nine centimeters to, to about, the, I think, in the 30s or 40 centimeters. This is a piece right in the middle. Up till about 1955, they had the felt pads. So we know that that was really truly produced in the late 40s or early 50s. If you see a teddy baby and it has like a naga hide pad, it mm. was produced in the, in the mid 50s up to about 1957. And that's okay. one way of really dating them in the, in the later part of the year. That's very that's, helpful. Okay, yeah, he's just, he's beautiful. He has a very, um, a lot of people say to me, well, how do you date a teddy baby if it doesn't have IDs? Um, this particular one has a very, uh, sort of an early sort of legacy face. It's a very sweet face. As as you get more into the 50s, the, the faces get a little bit, a little bit rounder and a little bit less precious. This one has a really classic and lovely look to him. Just very absolutely beautiful. Now. Beautiful. Just beautiful. If you look in the, inside of the mouth, you should see a, a spot of red airbrushing. If you open up the mouth. Sorry, don't mean to be gross. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's right. Just beautiful with the brown stitching. Yeah, he could it's be a, more beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca. It's so it's just so wonderful to, to learn about these bears. And uh, for those, there's a lot of people watching that I know have teddy babies themselves. So what we're also so excited about is to for our buddy to meet some friends. Well, that's exactly right. And what it's I thought a I hug. Be, well, exactly. You know, so a teddy bear collection is called a hug, which couldn't be more appropriate. So what I chose from my collection are four pieces just to briefly show with you, uh, sort of of the same, some era. And then I have a surprise Ooh. That's, that's, that's rated like PG or maybe, a, maybe a little bit higher. So if you're, that's if, okay. you are, if you blush easily, you may want to look away, but I'll give you plenty of warning. So the first one I wanted to bring was this, the little, his teeny tiny brother. And Rachel, Aww. this is about the size of your finger. This is about the size of your index finger. Is he about you, three for inches scale. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And see, so he's from exactly the same time. And he's, you see, he's got a teeny tiny U.S. own tag. This is about the size oh, of... Oh, wow. How cute. It's, it's, it's teeny. It's tiny. And he has, and yours would have had this red, this chest tag. See, it says Teddy Baby on it. Mm -hmm. and this is early. So you see it's imprinted in red. And here's his little button. He has the raised strip button. But he, the smallest size of the teddy babies have the closed mouth. So he looks pouty. He He's is very so, sweet. and he has a closed mouth. Okay, so the smallest size. And they didn't, make, they didn't make the little guy with an open mouth. So they came both ways. It's good to know. They came closed and open mouth. Post-war, only the smallest ones have the closed mouth. Pre-war, they did make a couple with the closed mouth, but they're much rarer. Okay. But this guy is in really lovely condition. He's got... He's got these um, the velvet feet and a very pouty face. Don't you just want to kiss Aww. him? He's beautiful. He is beautiful. Okay, so he is the brother. He's the baby brother of what you're holding in your hand. Okay? Now, the mm -hmm. colors, is, any, is the brown rarer than the golden blonde or? Well, we post-war, post -war, both the blonde and the brown are pretty much the same pretty much the same in rarity. What I'm going to show you is not, is very rare, but that's, we're going to save that for the end. But this little guy, again, like the little guys we talked about last week, was made for holding in your hand and loving. So finding a teddy baby in good condition with all his fur and IDs is very, very unusual. This was meant to be in somebody's hands or somebody's backpack. Yeah. So this is a very nice they were example. Meant to, they were meant to be buddies. Correct. Correct. All right. Now I'm going to show you the media, this is, you, this, is, this is of the same age and stage as 
the one you're holding. And why I pulled him out is I wanted to show you his chest tag and bell. You see? Oop. Ooh. Okay. Oops. Let me see. It looks pretty high up. See, um, it's, oh, one thing it's, I just noticed, Rebecca, is he has his, there's a little remnant of a, uh, what do you call it, a, a string for the chest tag right there. It's very possible that the, it was sewn on, or it is possible that it was attached to his collar. So it could be okay. either way, just depending on the size. And that larger size, it might have been sewn on. I think, it, but on this particular one, you can see it's on a loop. Can you see, is that clear? Oh, I can see that. And that's original. Yeah. How did that not fall off? I have no idea. And, and so they have the bell, which rubbed on it. So who knows? So as I said, the blue, the blonde ones like yours, see, see, they're, they're, you see, they look like they could be cousins. They're kissing cousins, the blonde. And so he has that lovely color in his mouth. And I wanted to show you his overalls, which are not original to him, but our stipe. And you oh, see, they have two teddy bears on them. And the blonde one is in blue so and the red and the, and the, the brown one's in red, just like their collars and decorations. So stipe is consistent. So here's the little brother of yours. With, and I want to show you the chest tag. And then in the exact same scale, I just love his face. You had mentioned the brown. And here oh, is his beautiful. Yeah. And I this is the, the same brown. age and stage. I love the white. And muscle. you know, the brown has a lot more contrast. And people love the brown and the blonde. And people have, you know, their, their preferences and such. I happen to love him. You can see his felt feet. And mm -hmm. what you see here on the edge is this, is it splitting? The cardboard. Mm, a little bit. The, the, the feet are lined in cardboard for standing, and sometimes on the edges, you'll see these splits. That's totally natural. That just happens. If you have one without these splits, that means it's in great condition. This is totally natural. This just means somebody loved him and took good care of him. He's a beautiful little boy. He's so sweet. Is he for now sale? Is this for sale? No, I can't, I can't part with him. There is a blonde teddy baby on my site for sale who's beautiful. Okay, if you, if so want to see if you guys are watching and you want a teddy baby, check Ruby Lane, Stipe Gals Vintage Museum Marketplace, um, because it's for sale on there. And this one is also for sale in my shop. So yes, get it while Absolutely. it's hot. Get He's it while it's wonderful. Well, this is wonderful. Now, are you ready for the grand finale? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. No blushing. What we have here, and we I think I shared a picture of him. Oops. This is my cheese doodle. This is a teddy baby. Now there's a amount of million things that are very interesting about him, but can I start? I'll start with the most shocking. So he, like yours, was made in the, the, the early 1950s. Now yours modestly has his ID tag on his arm. All right. This one, not so modest. All right, here we go. It's located on his crotch. <gasps> I hope we don't get censored for that. His, I've never seen anything like it. His made in the U.S. own tag is right. Well, you it don't fill in the It almost looks like blank. toilet paper. That's it funny. does. It looks like he. It's sticking out of his. Well, you know. His little. That's butt his crack. funny little. His butt crack. This particular one literally is the color of like Cheetos. You know, like the yummy corn snacks we hate to love or I love, love to hate. I do too. You know, you could get them low fat, so you can eat twice as many. And if they were whole well, thirty, not. I'd be eating them for every meal. But um, yeah, I'm with you. Okay, that could be my fourth meal. So he's the literally. I know it doesn't show up on the camera. He's literally the color of cheese doodles. He's so what's awesome. crazy rare about him is his color, which is crazy, crazy. I don't. I've never seen anything like it. They made a color called maize, and maize is more like a like a bright yellow, like corn. This literally is the color of orange. Is orange. So he's got all the teddy baby characteristics. He's a little cockeyed, which is adorable. And I had to have his feet redone because they were non-existent. But he's got all the teddy baby, fe baby features. And he has an another button that's very rare from this time. So in the 1950s, it was a period of transition and sort of moving on. Stife used whatever they had on hand. And in this case, they had on hand uh, buttons that were blank. I don't know if you can see this. There's oh, nothing on here. Wow. Right. Yeah. And so the blank button was used in the, the very late 1940s and early 1950s um, just because that was what they had on hand or that's what was able to be produced. So this sort of quirky bear has a strange black button, a stra is a strange color, and wahoo. And he's got it in the butt. I, I think he's, he's got just it. marvelous. Well, he is. His collar is original to Stife, but not original to him. But he, I, I thought he needed like, you know, like a gold medal 
So that's sort of what this is. Gold medal for gorgeousness and weirdness at the same time. But this is made at the same time as yours. Personality. He does. He does. So those are teddy babies around the period of yours. I love yours. He has a wonderful face. He's a fabulous size. He's got his button and and um, his his U.S. zone tag. Um, he, and working if he brown. had an ear tag, it would be yellow. Um, but those fall off. It would There's be yellow. Good, I think okay. He, he would be oh. a wonderful addition to a, 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 a 1950s era collection or before. Love him. He's almost perfect in every way. Well, thank you, Rebecca. It's so, uh, it's just, it means so much to, to learn more about these uh, bears and to know who they are. And, and it just builds so much um, value into, into these pieces because it's, it's just, it's just so important to know these things. So thank you for taking the time. Uh, I'm really excited to see you next week in Baltimore, Maryland. You're going to be doing um, a couple discussions. If, if people are tuning in, um, what can they look forward to for Baltimore with you? Well, well, I'm very excited to go to Baltimore. I'm traveling with some girlfriends, and I'm obviously meeting Rachel. We're going to have a wonderful time. It's going to be uh, great. Like a girlfriend, girlfriend's getaway. <laughs> you do the math. Um, <laughs> we, I am doing a number of things. I think the most exciting thing is I'm having a booth in the sales room. Now, you have to understand, I am, like, first and foremost, a Ruby Lane dealer and a collector. It's my passion. I'm not really an in-person seller, so Rachel hopefully will help me and coach me I will along. help you. I will have... I'll have a booth. I'm setting it up. I, I'm going to show you. I have three large. Oops, is that it? Can you see them? I'm still learning how to use the camera. Anyway, I have three We're gonna very large tubs, a fabulous stife. Oh, and sure, I'm let gonna... us see them. Let us see them so we can pre-shop. So for everybody that's uh, watching, I have um, known Rebecca for years, and she has. Oh, look at I that. Um, I've never oh. seen you have a booth. She usually just uh, attends oh, here's and the teaches. Stuff. And this oh, will be her first time for me seeing her with a booth. So, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, get out I'm your doing... checkbooks, everybody. Well, yes. Yeah, so and we also, take, we also take paper. And as, I'm, as you're learning, I'm much better with old things than new things. So I'm not so great with the camera. But I promise you, if you come and see me, you will love to hang out at my booth. I think I'm bringing like 200 items that fit on a table that holds 100. So Right on. Well, the, the, the doll and bear people won't mind. No, no and I'm bringing... And I'm bringing a special friend who loves selfies, my, my life-size Jocko that we talked about. And, and Rachel, yeah. you're going to bring him either a Ruby Lane t-shirt or a hat? He's going to have, he's going to have something. And I can't wait to- okay. I, Our I, sunglasses? I've seen pictures. He's bigger. He is so, he's like six and a half feet tall. He's amazing. Amazing. Well, he, amazing. he is. And what we're going to do at the show is we're going to give a head-to-toe tour of him and why he's so huge and fabulous. And I'm going to give just a little talk on the history of Stice life size or studio pieces, as well as the Jockos. And I would say, if you were to ask any collector, what do you love? Jockos, which are the monkeys and studio pieces, would definitely be in the top 10, if not the not five, of anyone you would ask who loves Stice. So I, I think this is going to be like, booyah. Booyah. And then, I totally agree. All of this content, everybody, will be streamed on uh, Ruby Lane Dolls. So watch the Ruby Lane Dolly Cam. Uh, all week for, for all of that content. So it's going to be great. And then I'm going to give a talk on the history of Stife dolls from the 1950s, bef uh, from like 1909, 1903 through 1950 or so. And so we'll have, um, hopefully to give some nice teaching as well. I, I don't know if I can bring any samples because I, I have, I have like four tubs of stuff. I don't think anything else is going to fit in my car, but if it does, I'm happy to share it with you. I love it. I love it. Um, you, you're just, you're just such a wealth of knowledge and it is so, you're so great. Last week I, I pulled out those two little miniature stikes and we hopped on a feed in five minutes and now they're, they're off to a new person's home who's so excited. She's actually watching right now. I'm not going to say her name, but she is watching. And, um, it's just, it's just such a blessing. She has it's very good taste. Learn. So I also found, I mean, just to, just to throw in one last little guy, because we Certainly. talked about the little ones. Okay. He looks to be early as well. Now, does he have little button eyes or little um, seed eyes? He has button eyes. They have a hole in the middle. Oh, so they're like little little beads or are they like they're buttons? They're little beads. They're beads. Yep. That, that's very original. You'll see that treatment often on early Stife items, especially the smallest versions. And that's clearly the nine centimeter bear. No, he's, he's pretty early. Does he have like giant feet? Yes. Big clump. Yeah, he's got big feet. Uh, yeah, he's he's probably in, from the teens. 
if not earlier. He's just he adorable. Like yeah, yeah. He probably has a long trailing F button. I, I... He does. Yeah. He does. Yes, he does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say he's from the teens, given his look and his eyes, if not earlier. He's really lovely. He's got some love Rebecca, on him. Where were we? We were in Michigan, and you and I did a seminar for Ruby Lane on dating Scythe Bears. So if you guys uh, want go to the Ruby Lane uh, Facebook, Ruby Lane mm -hmm. Dolls Facebook, or Ruby Lane's YouTube Those channel, are. You search Scythe and you'll see it. It's a 45-minute seminar that you and I did together where you shared a wealth of information. So look that up, everybody, <laughs> if, you're, if you want more info from Rebecca. Well, well, let me thank you again for sitting with me for so long and not falling asleep. I truly appreciate it. No, you're so good. <laughs> you're so good, Rebecca. You're, you're just fantastic. We really appreciate it. So again, oh, if you want to shop Rebecca, Scythe Gals Vintage Museum Marketplace on Ruby Lane. Your blog is My Scythe Life. Google Rebecca Kaufman with a K and you'll, right. you'll find her right away. And she's also, you've got, you've got her newsletter. If you guys are not in her newsletter, it is awesome. It is so much fun. I always look forward to it. You're famous for your newsletter. So if you guys aren't on that, join that today. So. Well, well, I appreciate that. And if you're interested in joining the newsletter, I'm actually sending it out a little bit early. It comes out on the first of the month, but I'm sending it a little bit early because I want to let people know about our show in um, Baltimore, which is a little bit before the first of the month. So we're going to let people know about that. And public day, if you're not a member of UFDC and like to stop by, we'd love to see you. And I hope that Rachel and I can give you a video tour of the booth. And if there's anything you see on the booth that's of interest to you, just give us a text or give us a call or, or send us a note from Ruby Lane, and we'll put that aside for you. So you the can, you can virtually shop. The early bird gets the worm. So the wonderful thing about when uh, Ruby Lane live streams from these shows is that everything is for sale. We know that you guys love to learn and it's good to look, but it's also really fun to buy. <laughs> so everything <laughs> is for sale. All good. Well, I well I hope. Looking forward to seeing you in person soon. Every looking time, don't to put it. more. You're keeping me so busy. Yes. Well, well don't, you don't know, stop. The bear, the bears, they're 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 just they're hot. Bears are so hot, and it's fun to be chatting about them. So Rebecca, thank you so much, and I'll see you next week. My pleasure, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Teddy hugs. Thank you. Teddy hugs. Bye-bye.